Howdy y'all, Color Care here with Average Joe's Tabletop. It's been a while since we've had a video, so we're going to come back strong with a battle report where we'll see my Color Care's Crusaders, led by my captain, take on G2 and his Ultramarines, led by his Gilliman. This is going to be his offic first official game to play uh, with uh, the actual rules where we're not just you know, lining up all the similar models that we have and killing each other. We're going to have actual objectives, and he's going to use his command points, and he's going to make some smart decisions, I know it. And just sit tight, enjoy the battle report. It'll be a quick one. We're just going to film what happened at the bottom of, or the end of each battle round just to make it a quick, fun one since it's a small point game with a Crusader narrative force versus G2's favorite Ultramarines. Sit tight, guys. Enjoy. Welcome to Average Joe's. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hi guys. Howdy y'all, Cole Care here, and we're gonna look at G2's force that he's gonna take in this battle report where it's gonna be just a hodgepodge group of his guys versus my Crusader force. So we'll do a little narrative game here with a battle report. Uh, but G2 is gonna take a battalion detachment that has two squads of intercessors and a squad of incursors. Uh, there's two elite choices in that detachment of aggressors with Fragstorm gauntlets, or Fragstorm grenade launchers and auto bolt storm gauntlets. His Redemptor with the Heavy Onslaught Cannon, Heavy Flamer, and Fragstorm Grenade Launchers. Then the three HQ choices for that uh, detachment are the Captain and Phobos Armor, the Lieutenant and Mark 10, and Chief Librarian Tigarius, who's going to be using Telepathic Assault and Storm of the Emperor's Wrath. Then he's also taking a Supreme Command Detachment, where his Gilliman is going to run as his Warlord trait and our, his warlord and the trait he comes with is that one that allows anybody any infantry unit to do a six inch um, heroic intervention i think it's nobility made manifest so that's his warlord trait there's g2's group hi guys again all right we're gonna look at the blood angels here i got a battalion detachment for my crusader force uh, my hqs are this Chaplain who has Invocation of Destruction and uh, that's it. He just knows one. So Invocation of Destruction, then I'll have the Canical Hate that he um, comes stock with. Uh, here's the Captain back here, Storm Shield Thunder Hammer. Um, he's going to have Death Visions of Sanguinius. Uh, his Warlord trait is uh, Artisan of War. And then also for the Crusader Force, I spent points on this chaplain. He has a Warlord trait as well, which is going to be um, Gifts of Foresight, so he'll have a 6-up Feel No Pain. And then I've got a, the Sanguinary Ancient here, and we'll have Raffle Ball, so we'll have 2 inches to our jump packs, and then the Captain also has the Angel Wings, so three roll fell charges, no overwatch on him. Then I got a five man squad, or four man squad of Sanguinary Guard, all Power Fist, five man Death Company, all Thunder Hammers, and then I got my three Intercessor squads. Uh, each Sergeant has a Thunder Hammer. So as you can see, I'm kind of light compared to G2's force. I think I've got like a thousand points, and he's 1300. So we're playing an open play, so we've drawn our cards and. Once we get all set up, we'll go over um, the match. Okay, here's how we get started. Um, this is the or the deployment that we pick. Try to get it to where it won't glare. It's basically, I think it's you know what was called the Dawn of War deployment. Um, it's that lengthways of the board. Uh, so looking over here at G2's deployment, he's got his intercessors there. He infiltrated his incursors up there on the top. Here are his aggressors with the captain, his dreadnought, lieutenant back there, these other intercessors hiding back on the line, and then Gilman and Tigarius are up in there, not hiding under that objective. Blood Angels were all at the front of our line here. Uh, we got an intercessor squad there, death company, a chaplain. Ancient, another Intercessor Squad, Intercessor Squad, and then 
our death company that comes in, I mean our sanguinary guard that will come in and kind of help us. Uh, captain is in deep strike. So our objective is domination. So each player uh, roll off starting with the uh, winner, each player places objective markers. So that's why they're just kind of, you can put them wherever you want as long as they were within 12 inches of each other and then six inches from the board edge. So here's three over here. And then there's two and that one that was up in this building with um, Gilman and Tigarius. <clears throat> so at the end of each battle round, if you've killed more enemy units than the round, uh, you score a point. And then the player who controls the most objective markers at the end of each battle round scores a point. So you're trying to kill and hold is the objective for this match. Uh, our twist that G2 drew was champion, so you select a character with nine wounds or less, and they're gonna get plus one to their strength and toughness, and plus two to their attacks and wound characteristics. So I picked my captain, and G2 picked Tigarius as his champion that received that bonus. And I have a ruse card that when I play it, we'll see what it does, because right now I get to keep it as a secret since I have less points than G2. And let's roll off G2 and see who is going to be going first. I rolled a one again. It's probably going to be you. Five. All right. Four. So G2 will be attacking first, and then we'll get to the bottom of the first battle round to see how it's going. Okay, so here's the bottom of the first battle round, or the end of the first battle round. Uh, G2 just moved these guys up to hold objectives. He just left his lieutenant hanging out up there. He pressed his um, dreadnought up there with his aggressors. And we'll talk about what happened to them. And he left his captain there. Uh, he wasn't able to shoot anything because all his weapons were short range and we had line of sight from these buildings. On my turn, I moved up these, or I didn't even move those intercessors, I think they were already in, in the spot, and I did their agenda setting a box uh, caster on that objective, um, jumped my chaplain and sanguinary ancient over to get them out of line of sight after they buffed up the death company before they took off. I moved that squad intercessors up, they didn't box cast that spot because they shot um, at his incursors that he had infiltrated up here. And then these intercessors just stayed back and did their box cast on that objective marker. And hopefully we can start pushing out here soon to go knock G2 off of some of his. Uh, the Death Company moved up. They charged the Dreadnought and the Incursor squad. Um, they killed the in, or killed the Dreadnought and then consolidated into the Incursors and elected to fight again and killed the incursors with only losing one um, death company marine there. So that ends turn one for us and next time you'll see us it'll be starting turn two and we'll give a report there at the end. Oh, and secondary guard they just stayed and wait. They're kind of a reserve unit for me the way I use them. So there's where we stand. Okay here we are at the bottom of turn two. Um, G2 ended up killing, he shot all my death company off the board, but my ruse that I had for, oh man, the lights washed that out. The ruse card I had, you can see it, there's the ruse, for having the lower army, was once per battle you can select one unit from your army that's been destroyed and return it to the battle. During the reinforcement step of your movement phase, set the unit up wholly within your deployment zone, wholly within six inches. From the edge of the battlefield and nine inches away from an enemy model. So the death company resurrected, they're over there now. I jumped the chaplain over there with this, well let's do G2's turn. So he basically consolidated all his guys here so he can get some re-rolls from his captain and his lieutenant, shot the death company off the board. Uh, he was pushing Gilliman out to go um, deal with my guys sitting on that post there and he left Tigarius in this building and I think he just fortified around that spot some more because the objective is if you kill more than your opponent or you get one point per battle round and if you hold more objectives than your opponent you get one point. 
Uh, so for my turn, I pushed these guys up. Um, we ended up going back on this fight here with the Death Company and the Incursors, and we used a transhuman physiology, and so one of those guys actually stayed alive um, and broke contact so the aggressors could shoot them off. So my intercessors came up and shot and killed that last incursor. Uh, these guys are moving up, so we can start pushing up the board and, and lay more of these little box caster things so we can get our agenda for the crusade um, experience. Um, Chaplain and Singerary Ancient jumped over here to help boost up uh, the death company to try to reinforce with whatever he's going to do with Gilliman. Uh, I came in from deep strike back here with the captain and I palm wings have fired the sanguinary guard uh, so he left Tigarius there alone so we jumped in and killed Tigarius off that spot so we could hold more than G2 because we've got one Four. These guys are close here. Actually. Maybe we at least got three, and he's got two. And we're on that one. So we got four, and he's got two. So it makes the score three to zero right now. But G2 is about to come back and do something with his Gilliman. He needs to start pushing his guys up the board. But that ends turn two for us. Okay, we are at the bottom, or we're at the end of turn three. And uh, G2 didn't move these guys much around to hold his spot, hold his spot, and he's pushing these guys back to the center of the board. Um, and they got their lieutenant captain with them, so they get all their re-rolls. Um, Gilliman came back on G2's turn and killed my captain, the sanguinary guard that was in there. Uh, I did do fight and death with the captain, and he was able to kill Gilliman. And G2 rolled a six for his bring Gilliman back to life. And then he rolled a three for his wounds. So Gilliman's back on the board with three wounds left. Uh, G2 killed two units and I killed nothing. So, and we both pulled the same amount of um, objective markers. So now the score is three to one. So I'm only beating G2 by two points. And on my turn, I didn't get to do much. I moved those two guys up, bringing this squad of intercessors up, kept them in the same place so they can hold a spot, left the chaplain there to hold where he can still buff the death company on the next turn, and I jumped him back there to hold a spot on that one. Um, so that's the end of turn three. We're about to do turn four. Okay, so we're at the end of turn four. Um, these guys moved up to be able to just barely hold that spot. I swapped after giving the death company the chaplain buff. I just jump swapped. I don't know why I did that. No, I no, I do know why. I jump swapped these two guys so he could give them that two inch buff for them to jump over here. Um, and they were able to jump in and kill the aggressors. But the aggressors were able to shoot off to use some stratagems where he didn't have to roll a hit roll and then sixes caused um, more armor penetration so he killed off those guys. And I pushed up this intercessor squad to try to take this point at the end um, and G2 still waiting there hidden on the other side of the wall so he can't get shot. Gilliman's still there and that intercessor squad still hasn't moved. And that ends Turn four for us. All right, so here's the end of turn five and the end of the game. Um, forgot to mention on turn four, no one scored any points because G2 killed one unit, I killed one unit, and we both held three spots. So that round went scoreless for both of us. Um, on G2's turn of it, he just he still has these guys here, still has Gilliman there. Um, he pushed after sh he came across through the building and shot as many of those. Um, my intercessors as he could and then he assaulted them and then after the fight we both just whittled each other down to uh, two guys left everyone passed their morale so they're still there locked in eternal combat because this match is over so G2 held three objectives um, he was able to kill the death company down to one guy left um, and through using you know, interrupts and 
attacking, you know, just going through the fighting rounds, uh, they were able to kill that captain and lieutenant there. Um, they didn't move. He stayed, those both stayed in the same place. So I ended up killing more than G2 on that round. So the match ends pretty good for a six-year-old fight. Some mistakes here and there. I tried to help him more in the end to bring the game back. Uh, but he should have pushed harder to the center of that board with those slow moving guys so he could have a fire or a gun line to keep me out. But that ends it. For my Crusader Force, I think the Death Company logged five kills and two assassin uh, assassinates with those um, killing that captain and lieutenant. Uh, the Sanguinary Guard and the captain over there Sanguinary Guard logged one kill, one assassinate with Tigarius. The captain logged two kills, two assassinates. And then each one of my intercessor squads logged one of the plant the Vox caster thing on an objective marker. Uh, so I just need to roll to see what kind of battle scars all the units G2 killed got if they're going to get any. I think I got to roll for that intercessor squad. The Sanguinary Guard and the Captain. His Death Company stayed alive and that Intercessor Squad stayed alive. So I got to see what some. see what kind of battle damage is going to happen to these guys. So we'll see for Intercessors. They pass. I think it's, you need a one. Uh, Sanguinary Guard. They are going to take a battle scar. And the Captain. He will not take a battle scar. Uh, so, I think what I'll pick for them, since they're my, my Palm Wings of Fire guys. Wounded, subtract one from this unit's move characteristic. Addition, subtract one for advanced charges. That's not good. We'll give them fatigue. They can't control objective markers when determining which player controls. I don't usually hold with them. So we're going to give the secondary guard, they will be fatigued. They can no longer hold an objective marker if they're challenged by another group. So there it is. There's G2's first battle report, and there's the first fight for my crusade force. See y'all next time guys. So here's kind of like an after action for the narrative force from the battle. Um, Colicare um, went up in one crusader point to three and then the death company went up from zero to one because they both became blooded. I got enough experience to move up that level. Um, so like I said, he went up to, to Crusader points three, became blooded, and I gave him finally balanced for his Thunder Hammer. So now we're back to hitting on twos instead of taking that penalty and hitting on threes. Um, Chaplain only gained one experience point. The Singular Ancient one experience point. Uh, Red Squad of the Intercessors, they gained three because of their box caster. Um, Yellow Squad, three because of the one point for the match, and they were able to put up one box caster. And Orange Squad, three. Uh, Death Company, they went up one Crusade point, got nine experience points because they got the Reaper points, and they assassinated two... Um, characters so i gave them veteran warriors so now all their when they hit on sixes it does double attacks so i don't have to waste that chaplet buff on them anymore so i can change that or give it to other people from the chaplain and then the singular um 
guard. They got three points, one for the match, and then they assassinated a guy. Uh, they did take a battle scar and they're fatigued. So if them and another group are holding a point, it's like my guys don't exist. So there is what the Crusader Force looks like now.